it's the holidays. Big week for everyone. No, see, I don't get a haircut for the holidays. Um, I'm like smooth up here. I do miss getting a haircut, though. I should go. I should just walk in and sit down and say, give me a trim or something. I mean, what are they going to say? They're not even going to know what to do. It'd be pretty interesting. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to start um, uh, going through something that a lot of folks have been asking me about, which is setting up autopilot. I want to go through a small series and just how to set it up, how to test it, right? And things you can do to make it a really good experience for, you know, placing your, you know, stop imaging. I wonder if they would even let me in to like a, a, a barber shop. Okay, so we're going to get started today just by uh, preparing our tenant and getting a test machine ready for autopilot. So let's go ahead to Intune here. Now, all you need from an Intune perspective is you have to have device enrollment enabled. So I'm gonna show you how to do that first. Um, we go to Windows, Windows enrollment, right? So automatic enrollment. Okay, I'm a big advocate for setting this to all. Um, as far as my MDM user scope those, uh, goes, and this only applies to Windows, you can leave this um, MAM scope set to none, won't apply here. Uh, so I, I like this on all because um, I want the devices without a user presence to be able to come into the tenant. This works both for a domain join scenario when you're bringing devices over into Intune with maybe group policy. This also um, works really well for autopilot. We can still control what devices come in, um, even though this is set to all. Okay, so we can go to back to Windows Enrollment. Actually here, we're gonna go to Devices, Enrollment, Windows, and Device Platform Restrictions. So this will basically allow us to say for Windows, we're gonna to go to properties and I want to block personally owned devices. Meaning the only way you can get in is with autopilot or group policy um, or a, a bulk provisioning package. So this will prevent people from self enrolling their personal devices. So that's where I recommend putting that control. That'll leave your all user scope. You won't have a problem, all user scope not being there seems to always be a common issue with autopilot. All right, so now that we can automatically enroll in Windows, let's go back to Windows Enrollment and Autopilot Deployment Program. We want a enrollment profile. Now I have one here. I'm gonna walk you through creating one, Windows PC. So we're gonna call this YouTube Enrollment Profile. Okay. Um, Convert all targeted devices to autopilot. We're gonna leave this to no. What this will essentially do though, is if I apply this to an existing device group that's not in autopilot, it'll then register them for me. So that's really powerful once we get into the current fleet stuff. Um, and this is really the crux of autopilot here, right? What is the end user experience? So gonna go over some of these. So deployment mode, user driven versus self deploying. Self deploying is really good for kiosk devices. If you wanna take a device, plug it into power, ethernet, let it enroll itself in Intune without touching anything. That's a great option. User driven is what we want. That's the most common where we see um, the device boot, the user has to sign in and it kicks off the process. Uh, join as Entra ID, so formerly known as Azure. Basically, you have the Azure AD join or the hybrid join. We're going to do Azure AD join. Um, hybrid join, uh, like it's a valid option for some folks if they still have to. My advice is for the most part, you're going to want to aim to be Entra joined, Azure AD joined only, cloud joined only. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's a lot easier to deploy to remote users. And, um, you know, it, we could do a whole separate video on that. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to leave it Azure AD joined. Um, software licensing. So these are things that you generally want to hide just because it streamlines the out-of-box experience. So think about when you're setting up a computer, going through the Windows out-of-box experience, 
these are things you would see and click on. We don't need users to do this. We can hide and accept these on their behalf as a corporate device. Change account options. So we want to hide this. When, when a user logs in and they see autopilot, we don't want them to be able to get out of it, right? So we're gonna hide changing the account. Now, this is a very important part here, like why autopilot? So even though this is the first user to log into this device, we can suppress that account to be just a standard user. They don't have to be an admin. It's a great feature of autopilot. Allow pre-provision deployment. My advice is always turn that on yes. So pre-provision, formerly known as autopilot white glove, that allows a technician or your vendor to basically take a device, hit the Windows key five times, and it'll enroll itself uh, in, uh, in Intune from autopilot, receive all its device level configurations and policies, and then it'll be nice and fresh for the end user having gone through all that. So we can get to this in a future uh, video. My advice though is there's nothing wrong with leaving that on, so let's leave that. Uh, language, I recommend leaving operating system default. Um, same thing with keyboard, just leave that on yes to automatically configure. Um, don't matter too much. Applying a naming template. So names matter a lot less when you have a cloud managed device that you can look up by the username. But this does give you an opportunity to name a device. So I typically go with M365 dash, and you can either use a serial number macro or just the random one. Um, I'll do serial. It'll basically fill in whatever's left. You've seen me do something similar in the package for the migration. Um, but yeah, or you can just leave this as serial number. Doesn't really matter. Um, we can call it autopilot so you can identify. Actually, let's do that. Autopilot and then serial number. Ooh, that's too many. Let's do AP for autopilot. Good enough. So now that we have that profile, how does it get assigned? So this is very important. How do we assign that to a group? Um, the device doesn't exist yet. <laughs> so some folks do this to all devices. The problem is what if you have multiple profiles? What if you have multiple builds? The problem is gonna be assigning this uh, before they're registered. So I'm gonna leave this unassigned for now. So this is very important. This is where group tags come in, okay? So I have my normal stuff, my autopilot profile. Let's take a look at that, okay? That's actually uh, not assigned to anyone, so I don't have to worry about that. This is the one that's assigned. Um, default M365 Corp Profile. This is assigned to my M365 Devices group. So what is that group? Let's take a look at that. So that group, M365 Devices, M365 Devices. This is a dynamic device group. So if I look at the membership rule, this is looking for any device that contains the order ID of M365. Well, what does that mean? That means when I'm looking in my autopilot devices, once they get enrolled, it's this tag right here. So if the group tag is assigned has M365, it shows up in this group. Now I have a group I could assign my autopilot profile to knowing um, it'll just be there when the devices arrive. So I know I just said that. I'm gonna show that right now. We're gonna create a new one for YouTube um <laughs> since we're gonna we're gonna use that uh youtube enrollment profile i just talked about so let's go back to groups and let's make one called youtube youtube autopilot devices i'm gonna make a dynamic device group add a query now these we still have to edit ourselves so this is going to be device uh, sorry, parentheses, device. Okay, this is going to be device dot device physical IDs any. Okay. Equals. Okay, and this is going to be order ID uh, colon YouTube parentheses 
click OK. So basically what that rule means, let's go back to that for a minute. Let's refresh this. What that rule means is anything with the YouTube group tag is going to go in this group. So you see here, order ID, YouTube, it has to equal that. Um, so where does it get that from? Let's take a quick look. All right, what I have here is a test device that is not registered in autopilot yet. Um, so typically when you're registering a device on autopilot, you're gonna want your vendor to do this. And in this, you can provide them what tag you would like to use. For testing purposes, we can register a device ourselves. So what I just did to pull this up is I hit function shift F10 or just shift F10, depending if it's a laptop or a desktop, to open the command prompt at the UB screen here. Then I'm gonna type PowerShell. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is set our execution policy to bypass or unrestricted um, testing. It doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a few things we have to do here. So the first thing we have to do is we have to install the NuGet package provider. Install package provider NuGet. Confirm false force. And I'm going to say... Um, allow clobber. Uh, I can't allow clobber with this. I already have it, but force should take care of it. It's just going to overwrite it. Okay. Now that we have NuGet installed, we can get our module. Install. Um, so there's two modules. First one we want is we want the install module. Um, Windows autopilot Intune, force. That's got some graph pieces in it that'll allow us to authenticate. And the other one we want is a script. Install script, get Windows Autopilot info. Okay, so now that they're installed, let me clear that out. We're gonna run get Windows Autopilot Info. One of the parameters we can pass, if you start typing group and tab out, you'll see group tab. So I can apply my YouTube tag right there. The next switch I want is online. What this will allow you to do is this will allow you to, from this device, open up a, uh, a Microsoft authentication window. And I can sign into the tenant here. So let's do Steve Warner at stevecapacity.com. You have to be an Intune admin or a GA to do this, at least the first time. Now this will authenticate. Yep, see it's the first time. So it's asking me if I consent and I do. And it's actually gonna go ahead and take this device and it's going to post it to autopilot for me. So what does this mean on, on the back end? So what this means is if I were to go to my autopilot devices right here, uh, which one was that? It started with 0196. That'll show up. So I can hit sync. This is where it lists your autopilot devices. And I'll hit refresh. It'll show up here in a minute. Um, if I refresh my list, I will see it here now. So check this out. So there's the device and there's the group tag. It doesn't have the profile sign yet. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, the device gets an Azure AD object created. Um, due to it just being uploaded on autopilot and it's been up here before so it's actually connecting to an older object it doesn't matter that much um first time will probably just be the serial number but let's see how it's going to get that um how it's going to get a profile assigned so the first thing i want to do is i want to go back to the profile i made and actually assign it now that i have somewhere to assign it to so we go back to the youtube enrollment profile and properties I can edit assignment and add that YouTube group. YouTube. There we go. So the real question is what's in that group? So if you remember here, because this is looking for that tag, if I go to members, if you take a look, the device already showed up. Um, 
and that's great and that's because it found the tag now i just want to show you how that works so uh let's grab that device name um so if i go to graph explorer graph explorer let's go to the microsoft graph explorer great let's sign in to show you what things look like on the back end so if i go to beta devices Okay, so I'm going to see all my devices here when I run that. Um, let me search for that. Okay, so that's the display name. So this is the object right here. So let me just copy that and pass it through. There we go. So this is the actual Azure object of the device. Now if we take a look, take a look at the order ID. That's what happens when the group tag gets applied. It says, um, you see it right there. So order ID means group tag, and in this case, it's YouTube. And that's what basically sent it here. So what's going to happen now is uh, once I go back to my autopilot devices, once it syncs through, that's going to be assigned. So let me refresh that. And we see it's pending. So what's it pending? It's pending assigning the YouTube enrollment profile. Okay, so now that the profile is assigned, I'm going to boot up the device. Okay. So you can see I'm being prompted um, to join Steve Capacity. This is coming from my uh, company branding setup. The Steve Capacity logo is there, but the resolution on this vm remoting in from another vm is absolutely atrocious but i will be able to enter my credentials here notice there's nowhere to say i don't want to do this so i i this is the only way to sign into this device now because it's corporate owned um and should be all set to proceed now what comes next depends on what we set up in intune so there you go we were able to take a brand new device register it in autopilot uh, we're able to set up an autopilot deployment profile and figure out a way to assign it um, dynamically, right? So that when the registered device shows up, it gets an autopilot profile. And this will be true now to anything I give that tag to in the future. So it's kind of funny. That's the end of autopilot's job. Uh, the next part will be what Intune does to it. But we'll still call it autopilot just to keep it, you know, keep it convoluted. So... Uh, come back and we'll we'll get this thing working. One, two.